So I have Comcast internet mm-hmm. here. Also, by the way, welcome to Pop Culture Unboxing. Oh, oh, the, is this actually the show? This is the show now. Oh, I first we... ever episode where we're monotoned and boring because right now it's a hellscape apocalypse of snow and death outside, and we're now chill and mellow because our. Uh, uh, our, our spark plug of a human being is not here today. Uh, Matt Ross is not here. Did you notice he's gone? Do you also notice we're in a different room? Wait, what? We're in a different room. We're recording in a different room. Matt's not here. Where have I been this whole time? My dining room. And this is not the dining room? No. This is, this is an office. This is my office. Look at all the nerd stuff around. Do you think I dine with all of these things? You know, I wouldn't put it past you. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's true. I have sat action figures across from me before, like, but that was because depression. <gasps> oh, I was gonna say now it's just depressing. I got it back to working. For those of you that don't know, because I'm pretty sure that Matt's gonna cut the first like ten minutes of this uh, conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, is, Matt's uh, already mad. He's like, you guys are talking about doing stuff and not explaining it to the <laughs> mic. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> Ryan has lights in this office that he's um just. I don't know if it was recently he set up, but now he's changing the colors and the lights, trying to figure out how exactly you, the audio listen listener, <laughs> should be viewing this audio podcast. Matt, Matt will never let us record a podcast without him ever again. Oh, one hundred percent. Wait, does this have a limit to how long we can record? Does it? I don't know. We'll find out. If we I have guess to we'll re- find- if we have to redo the episode again. So, so should we do the should we do the uh, outro now? <laughs> now <laughs> like if we get cut off, it's just all of a sudden. Hey guys, thanks for listening to us. You can find <laughs> us at <laughs> just remember who we are. Uh, who are you? You didn't uh, introduce yourself. Oh yeah, I'm Zach and I'm Ryan. This is uh, what's this show called again? Pop culture unboxing episode fifty seven. Fifty seven. Fifty seven. Man, it's, we're getting old. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can feel it in my joints every time I crawl out of bed. Every time I crawl out of bed, I hear like my first knee pops and the other one pops, and I do the, that old like. <laughs> so, uh, well, you think so? I have a challenge because Matt's not here. Mm-hmm. I don't even know why is he not here. Uh, I think he had something like work. Like something that clearly isn't as important as this podcast. He got fired. He didn't have he didn't have a job. No one would hire Matt. Wait, so what? if he doesn't have a job and he told us he was working, does that just mean he doesn't like us? Yeah, probably. I I guarantee watch, what will happen is in a couple minutes I'll get an email that says Jan Jinkles is live on Twitch and be like, I see. So you've already <laughs> aban- didn't even make it to episode one hundred before you abandon us for your other fame. So is this our is this our point to see like if Matt actually listens to the episode? Well, he has to. He has to edit the episode. Oh, that is a good point, though. That would be funny to see, because I bet he doesn't listen to the whole <laughs> He just doesn't I, listen to it at I all. I bet. Or this will be the first episode he actually listens all the way through, because he wants to know if we talked any mad crap on him. This this might be true. Uh, what crap could we talk on, Matt? Oh, boy, he's not here. There's so many. Oh. So many things. He's, <laughs> oh, he's so not funny. A, a, pl- a plethora of crap. He is... When it comes to this podcast, a dictator. Of that. <laughs> like, he doesn't. Like, Papa doesn't let me be creative. <laughs> oh. Oh. I like it. True. I like it when he's not here because I can make fun of him. <laughs> I was, was going to say, don't you dare. Oh, that was bad. Talk about our don't make lovely fun of dictator Papa. like that. Don't make fun of Papa. <laughs> he's how this show keeps going. Uh, there's a lot that happened this week in pop culture news. Is there? Oh, I just realized. Well, this is the first episode that we talk actually about the topics on the on the show notes. Well, I'm back, and you've lost Matt. So we've gone from chaos yeah. to extreme order. Here's how we really find out whose coattails or who who's riding whose coattails to fame right now. Is it me riding Matt's Matt's uh, coattails, or is he riding our coattails to fame? Because, well, you know, he thinks the world revolves around him. I'm, I, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, that sounds so bad because when he's not here, like, these are the things that we say to each other. <laughs> so, like, the it audio, sounds like we're like the, the worst are going to be like, wait, what? <laughs> sounds like we're the worst friends that have ever existed. It's oh, great. Uh, so, do you know that company Disney? You heard of them? Eh, you know, I've heard, you know, you heard mixed reviews pieces. here and there. Heard a lot of uh, Chinese propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> Disney, lots of uh, 
uh, stories of racism and terrible, terrible thing. What movie about a crow? Did you remember the movie about the crows? Were very. Oh yeah, yeah. The, crow, the crows were stereotypical. Yeah, they're, yeah, yeah. They were they were they were stereotypical, <laughs> quote unquote, <laughs> stupid African Americans. Yeah, owner owner of the <laughs> is that what they said? is that what Disney said? <laughs> well, no, that that was the reason why they pointed them out as racist uh, because that was they were like stereotypical. Mm, yeah, I'm gonna need a source on that one. That owner has his head frozen in in the below Disney parks. Oh, the Walt Disney. Yeah, oh. Walt Disney. Well, I, w- I really, wouldn't doubt it. I've, there's an old documentary about him that uh, like shows his his life to becoming who he was or mm-hmm. becoming you know household name Walt Disney. Uh, and Mickey Mouse was apparently came from a pet rat that he or pet mouse that he collected when he was homeless. Oh well, that would make sense. That, that was those were back then when stories were really sad, like. To make it, to make it, you had to be very like, you had to be lonely and sad and homeless. <laughs> yeah. Now well, you just go on TikTok and hopefully someone says like they like your your that's funny. your buttocks enough well, and then they'll. That was also <laughs> in. I, w- I would even say definitely like a hundred years ago, you would there was less emphasis on credential mm-hmm. and more on potential. Yeah. So like if you had the potential to be good at something, people would give you a shot. Um, and they would, they wouldn't worry also so much if about you were your white. credentials. Yeah. And there was also that <laughs> as well. Also if you were white. <laughs> but, but you, you could make your, and a man. your way. And a man. Cause most of the time, if you were a, a female back then, you were being hired to be the secretary and mm. just be basically eye candy for the employees. That's what I'm told. I don't know. I didn't grow up back then or anything. I just, I saw how film was. <laughs> as a f- I watched films and therefore that is exactly how it went. There's I mean, no nuance. I don't know about you, but I saw that Lion King live action, and those, I mean, they talk. I didn't know this, but animals <laughs> actually move their mouth like humans. <laughs> I actually have a really funny story. Uh, a friend of ours that we grew up with. Sure, why not? Let's not follow the show. No, no, it, it actually pertains. She believed that giraffes were mythical creatures. What do you, I don't understand what you mean. So the first time she'd ever seen a giraffe was on one of those uh, commercials where this guy had like, a, like he was super rich and he had a mini giraffe that ran with him. And she thought that it was a mythical creature. And somebody's had to sit oh, her down and explain to her that giraffes are real and they she, exist. Did she also not go to school? <laughs> or like, No, it was just one of those things she had never seen one. So like... Oh, okay. So you're, she she didn't... Because she had never seen... That's how all of my yeah. reality works. If I don't see it, it doesn't, it doesn't exist. exist. Well, it's kind of like red pandas. It's like growing up, we never saw red pandas. And then like... You see a red panda and you're like, what the heck is that thing? And they're like, oh, yeah, it's a red panda. They're all over China. And it's that's, like, oh, okay. look. <laughs> that's like a bino deer. You ever seen an albino deer before? Oh, yeah. I have seen so many. In fact, I almost shot one. I know someone that shot one. They're not as rare as I thought they were. Or they're just in like my hometown. I've been lucky enough to see a lot of them. Mm. But um, I remember like that was a big thing in my hometown. Is like, there's an albino deer out in this field. Like they called their neighbors. We're like, Hey, Kathy, you want to come over and see this out? See the deer. And like, we would all be standing in like two football field lengths away. You would see all these deer in the field eating the corn. And in the middle of them is a white majestic. You're like, oh, that thing's beautiful. And then you're like, how could you kill that? And then sure enough, someone shot one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I almost shot They're one rare. once. Uh, yeah. Cause I used to be a hunter in case anyone didn't know. It's hard to believe it, but canceled. Ryan now, Ryan now is really boring and doesn't do very much like anything that he actually truly loves but deep down inside <laughs> i want to go fishing and and i want to go shoot a bear actually no i don't want to shoot a bear bear hunting scares me that's the one thing i'll never i'll never I can get do you yeah yeah because as my grandfather once said they can fall or they can climb up a tree faster than you can fall out of it and i don't want to fight that <laughs> I, <laughs> like I, I was talking to a guy at work and he's he said when he goes bear hunting he takes a he had you know has his normal gun he's always has a sidearm on him I was like faster. I was like uh, I don't trust I don't trust a sidearm (laughs) to take down a bear. Well, it's it's not that you're you're gonna put one shot and go. You're gonna drop your entire magazine into the bear, hoping that the bear stops. Did you ever see that video of the guy who had got attacked by a bear and he's just walking? He's walking like he's filming himself because he's walking himself to the hospital to go drive, get in his truck and walk. And he had just been attacked and there's blood and cuts all over him. And he says, one boy's like, I have to keep my hat on because the skin of my ear would fall off if I did. Oh, man. And the, is- and the dude is. 
probably the manliest man I've ever seen because he's so calm and calm chill about it. about it. He's, he's just like, shock. I got hit by a bear. You know, bear attacked me. It was crazy, man. And I saw that. I saw a video of a guy who was on a trail, and I, I think it, I think it was a mountain lion. Was, oh yeah, was the one that was like chasing him away. Yeah, well, he was walking. <laughs> it was like it was trying to chase after him. Dude, well, you you heard the story of the guy that actually killed a mountain lion. That would turn out to be not true, though. It, it well, no, it was true, but it was a it was a smaller mountain lion. It was younger. <laughs> oh yeah, and he literally yeah. choked it to death. Well, so that's what. But I heard he also he used a pocket knife. He well, he may. So have. There, that's the thing. That's but, but either the, the way, original like, story, hand to hand combat still. Like, well, I, the if thing you is, take out a, if you're powerful. telling me that you took down a, you took down even a, a baby mountain lion with your bare hands mm. over a pocket knife, I'm going to be more impressed by the bare hands guy. <laughs> oh, well, still, I mean, like, w- what if he was a jujitsu think- guy? He just <laughs> wrapped around, he was rolling oh. around like an MMA fighter on top of I was, was going to say, like, Joe Rogan's in the background of the woods just being like, oh, he's got him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, like, I'm afraid of police dogs and, like, they're probably half the size of a mountain lion. I just watched so like police like, dogs. I just watched a video yesterday of how uh, I didn't know that the that firefighters in mm-hmm. like Florida they have like you know how police have a dog they have like firefighter dogs mm-hmm. and their main purpose is they will they go around like a house and if they smell any like any like gasoline or anything that could have ignited the fire if there's foul play involved yep they'll sit and yep. they, that's their only purpose it's like that's a good do- that's the you, life you want to know the coolest service dogs that exist sure. Navy SEALs. Is this pop? Is this pop culture related? Does this all sound? Is this is this typical or shit? See, this is where well, I feel like this is the podcast I want to do. Is just have a grand, just random conversation. Don't have any. Don't don't talk. I want to be the the <laughs> Joe Rogan of of uh, well, no. I just want to be like a dumber, worse version of Joe Rogan. <laughs> like, no one, everyone wants to hear him talk. Nobody likes me. Well, the thing about Joe Rogan that everybody likes is that he facilitates conversations really well, and then he follows up with good questions that I think most people want want asked. Uh, there's a YouTube channel called Chariz- uh, Charisma on Command or Command on Charisma. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's the other way around, but they analyze Joe Rogan all the time of how why he's so successful, mm-hmm. and it always comes down to the fact that the dude it all it always ends up leading to like the dude actually cares and wants to learn from everyone and yes. he doesn't have opinions on anything he just well, he that lets the coolest what, thing he lets his he lets them tell him he lets people tell him what they think and then he molds his opinion so he never has the same opinion yeah you know? twice I have mean, you ever seen him uh interview jordan peterson yeah i've watched all of the jordan peterson i saw my favorite one is with him it's it's jordan peterson joe rogan and uh uh weinstein yeah yep burt burt brett 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 weinstein um, yep, and that's that's probably one of the most interesting ones. That yeah, to I've be honest with you, that was the one that got me into the Joe Rogan podcast because I thought Rogan just oh, really? I thought Rogan just interviewed fighters, and when I realized no. that he interviewed everybody, I was like, oh, cool. So like, I started watching all these other ones, and that's what got me into it. That's like the confusion on our own show, like mm-hmm. the Destiny thing, is because Destiny, Dest, the Destiny podcast that Matt does falls under Pop Culture Unboxing's YouTube channel, and mm. that's where the confusion for people comes, is because on Joe Rogan's podcast. He doesn't really change it. He just calls oh. them the Joe Rogan Experience uh, fighter companion, mm-hmm. and that's what like why a lot of people think he only interviews fighters is because anyone, most of the stuff that people watch are his fight companions. Yeah. Outside, of, like, like he yeah, there's an audience that watches only the fight companions, and then there's a bigger audience that watches all of it. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Uh, well, or, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't watch the fight campaigns, but I don't watch MMA very much. Let's do, let's talk about let's at least talk about one of these things. Disney oh, yeah, Plus had a mega announcements happen uh, over the. <laughs> yeah, which ones? Uh, so, so what movies are coming out? So some of these aren't movies. So, mm-hmm. so basically, what happened is they had like a like they first announced like their streaming shows. They had trailers released for for previous shows announced. So uh, we got like a trailer for Loki. Okay. Um, I did see a picture for that one. Uh, Hawkeye, which they're calling it Hawkeye, but it's like the movie that transfers. It's going to be the Kate, like it's Hawkeye's character transferring over to become Kate Bishop, which is his daughter. His daughter, yeah. Uh, and then they had they announced information about She Hulk. Like we we've seen set photos of Hawkeye. We have not seen anything about. Excuse me, She Hulk. The Secret Invasion is probably one of the most interesting mm-hmm. things of these, is because um, Secret Invasion is like a, a very popular comic book. 
in the Marvel like in the Marvel comic book universe. And instead of this being what everyone thought was going to be like the the next MCU project, mm -hmm. it's going to be a TV show. It's going to be oh, like okay. a Disney Plus show. Uh, and then there's this is the one that I was really excited for Matt to be here because Matt and I have talked about the Star Wars holiday special. Well, they're doing a Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special that James Gunn's going to be a part of. Oh, that's nice. Like, I guess he's writing it. Uh, and then there's a show called I Am Groot, which is just basically, I think, is going to be, like, if James Gunn's involved, I'm telling you, it's going to be Degrassi, but it's going to be, like, Groot's lifestyle. So he's going to go to high school. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> I'm, I, I was going to say, like, it, I, I saw the I Am Groot on the show notes. And I 100% just want to see either an entire movie or an entire TV series with no actual words, just people saying, I am Groot. And then like <laughs> at the very end of the series is where he meets Rocket or the end of the movies where he meets Rocket. And those are the first actual English words you hear. And that could be like an end credit scene where it's like, oh, uh, you know, that'd be actually really interesting because you could have like, you don't even have subtitles. It would, you have to try to figure out what they're saying to each other. Yeah, it, it, it would be it would be. Just as good as Godzilla, because I remember when Godzilla came out, and this is one of the things that I absolutely love to like, I say the story all the time. When Godzilla came out, the critics didn't like it because there wasn't enough human conflict. And I feel like everybody collectively went, well, that's exactly why we went. There's no human conflict. It's just big monsters fighting each other. So like for I am Groot, it could just be Groot like going around the universe is this like, because like he's a, he's a mythical ent. <laughs> like there's like no other groups that we've ever there, seen. There has to be a a weed joke in that in that show. There's oh, go yeah. there has, there to, has be, to be several of them cuz I mean how you, I mean there's tree people. Like you, <laughs> well I don't know. I don't even know if that's going to like this could be like side stories that Groot goes on mm -hmm. or whatever. But like those were some of the bigger I didn't put everything because there was a lot. Like if yeah. there's a lot on that list right now of everything that Disney announced and it, even I didn't put it all because I didn't care. I cared more or less about all the Star Wars stuff. Yeah, I'm starting to realize this now because uh, for for those of you that can't see, because none of you can see because this is audio, uh, <laughs> I just realized there's a second page full of announcements. Yeah. Is there more than two pages? No. Okay, so you stopped it too. Yeah, because I was like, this is probably going to take the whole episode of us talking about it because of how the format has always been. Where at least the last four weeks or so, mm. we don't stay on the show notes. So I didn't even expect us to go through all of these until oh, yeah. you said, until we, Matt said he wasn't going to be here. I was like, wow, the first time ever we'll have a structured show. And then we <laughs> and then we just threw that out the window for the first 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Oh, 20. Holy crap. It's already been 20 minutes. Well, I also think, <clears throat> well, excuse me. Yeah. yeah. But I and don't, don't die on me. Cause I can't do this solo. I, buddy. I can't even do this the way it is now. I'm, <laughs> I don't know why it's having Matt not here. Like, I could feel the nerves. It's like I'm going to do stand up right now. Well, I think the thing is, like, Matt is so knowledgeable about like pop culture and all these different things. Like, he is the one that's like, oh yeah, here's this tidbit that you might not know, and here's this oh, thing yeah. that you might not know. And, I like, think I'm just the guy that has the opinions based on the things you tell me. I think that if pop if Matt was to ever die, pop culture unboxing would have to end. I couldn't do this without him, and I know what he would Morbid. say. I know what he would say. He would say the same thing I said. Is like if I ever croak, you got to keep it going, and he'll be like, he'll be like, nah, dude, I'm not doing it, not doing it without you. And then as soon as I, <laughs> as soon as he goes, I'm gonna ha have to live up to the expectation because he, I know he's gonna be like, no, nah, well, keep you, the show. I hope that he does listen because now he can come back and answer all those things. Oh yeah, now he can see what it's like from my point of view. The one, the one time when uh, his brothers, his brother and dad were here, mm -hmm. and you guys kept talking about. All these, you had all these Star Wars questions and stuff, and he kept saying, "Like Ryan would know." And I'm sitting at the listening <laughs> to the episode, home. like I do, I do know it. But let's Star Wars. Let's talk about this. So yeah, what do you got? So uh, the first one is going to be the Ahsoka show, which this is this is pretty much what it, I expected was going to happen. So they're actually making a show off of it. Yeah, which makes sense. But I, that's what this is. What I thought the Mandalorian was going to be is Mandalorian was just going to be like a catalyst to help it out, like launch all these future shows mm -hmm. surprisingly the only thing on this list really is is uh is 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 ahsoka because the other stuff well no rangers of the new republic is but first ahsoka is mm -hmm. happening this takes place during the mandalorian uh well during the timeline of the mandalorian but that's because at the end of the one episode she had said she's looking for thrawn that's where that's what the quest is going to be and yeah. everyone's going to 
I mean, I'm excited to see it. Rosie Dawson's pretty good, but I do kind of think that uh, Ashley Eccleston should come back. Eccleston? 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 I don't remember if that's her name. This is See, this is what I need him for. This is what I need Matt for. He, he knows better. Uh, but but so so with that, like, are they just like going to drop the uh, the Mandalorian? Or is it going to be one of those things where you're like, this is the Iron Man for the MCU. We're like, this is the first of many different series that are going to come on. And then they'll just continue to run this until the end of time. So kind of like that. It kind The Mandalorian is kind of like to branch off and start this actual cinematic universe. Because they're, mm-hmm. they're still, because we know uh, Taco Waititi is going to have his own, he's having his own Star Wars film. Like he, they announced he's going to get a Star Wars film. There's hmm. another one on this list that's called Rogue Squadron. And it's directed by Patty Jenkins, who is, who I, the way they, they announced this was really cool because she was on an Air Force base. Her dad is a part of the Air, was a part of the Air Force. So oh, cool. she grew up on Air Force bases. And, it's Rogue Squadron, which is basically the story of pilots. It's like a, only a pilot mm. incentive, a pilot sent of Star Wars film, which is great. But it's cool because she'll have like a more of a like as they say, like she has experience. She knows what it's like to live like like the life of a pilot through her dad. Mm. So I I think that she's going like it. I don't know. It, it's yeah, being able to draw from that experience would hopefully bring you yeah, and bring it right into it. And so far, she's been a great director. They. Since Wonder Woman 2 is coming out on Christmas Day, we've already got some like reviews of it. Or I've heard people say that they've seen or that there's reviews coming in and they're good. So apparently people like that movie already. Well, to show you how much the DC universe has impacted society, I had no idea the second one was coming out. And now that I say it, I remember saying that about it. The first previously, I yeah, but like I don't remember the previous conversation. That's, that's how much the, of an impact it has. That's because the only films that people <laughs> want to see is is Wonder Woman. Like Wonder Woman is leading the charge when it comes to DC films. But uh, so Ahsoka's happening. Uh, Rangers mm-hmm. of the New Republic also takes place there. The Mandalorian. I don't know. Did you you haven't watched the Mandalorian, right? I have not. So there's there's characters uh, that keep, that have shown up in season two a couple times, mm-hmm. and they're like helping build the New Republic, and they're they're basically pilots. Uh, there it's there. It's going to be the one story of the one of the pilots. It's his show, which is cool. We're getting an Andor, which is a Cassian Andor. Mm. Uh, uh, did you watch, um, Rogue One? Yes. Uh, Cassian from yep. Rogue One. We're getting his, his movie. Okay. They showed kind of like behind the scenes clips of that. We're getting a Lando Calrissian movie, which is going to have, uh, Chowder's Gambino. Donald Glover. Oh, that's funny. He's going to be, because he was. Is he going to be young, young Lando? Yeah, because he was Lando in uh, Solo. And so they're just going to yeah, continue. Yeah, like he was one of the characters. He was the one of the standout characters out of it that people were like, mm. oh, I I actually liked his portrayal. He did a really good job now, on it. I didn't go see Solo, but when it came out, I was then told it's really not that good. Don't go. Don't worry about it. Uh, so I, I liked, we walk like I left the theater and I loved it, but mm-hmm. I liked it because instead of just treating it, like I, per, I kind of ignored a lot of the problems that came out of it and looked at it as, uh, like a star Wars heist Western movie. And that's yeah. what it was like before the Mandalorian, the closest thing I ever had to a star Wars spaghetti Western was solo. And that's, was that? and, it, and that's it, like when you, I enjoyed it for that. Plus mm-hmm. they like showed Darth Maul again, which was kind of cool. Uh, well, but, and I do think that like <clears throat> one of the one one of my because like you're mentioning they're building out this this universe like with all these different characters, I think this might actually oddly enough help the prequels because what you're going to end up getting is all of the information that you should have gotten originally. You already did. Well, so so we did through through live action though. Yeah, well, th- see, we're not going to see most of that though. Mm-hmm. You're only gonna see that in, like the only thing it's anime that we know that's gonna tell more stories from the from like the Clone Wars eras. Is oh, I'm sorry. I said, I, I said you mean the, the I, I meant I meant the new yeah the sequel trilogy. Yeah, the sequel. Well, trilogy. yeah, that's what because th- this is after the the prequels, so this won't have an effect on it. No, that's what Mandalorian is supposed like. John Favreau and uh, Dave Filoni said like they want the Mandalorian to help answer questions of how the New Republic or how the New Republic started and how the first order gained a power mm. because it, you know, how did this massive army form during the time of the new Republic growing? And they never, they never found it, you know? Yeah. 
Um, yeah, how, how, how was it a fight, mm-mm. essentially? Yeah, like, how did they get to this point? Mm. Uh, and then Lando, Obi-Wan Kenobi, we got more announcements that Obi-Wan Kenobi starting to film next next year i'm excited about February. that yeah now is is that a full film or is that gonna be it's a tv show it's gonna be a tv show it's a show and uh takes place 10 years after revenge of the sith okay uh hayden christensen's coming back to play darth vader they oh. s- so there's there was some so there were theories on how that was gonna look and uh one theory i liked was the idea uh Instead of Obi Wan and, and Vader would actually like they there was talks that Obi Wan and Vader were gonna get another swing at each other. Yeah. So instead of them physically fighting, we're gonna see Anakin and Obi Wan fight again, but uh, using the Force. So like, you know how Luke did the Force projection mm-hmm. things, we're gonna see that again in some sense. I don't know how I feel about that in the in the Force in the in the veil of the Force probably. Which is, hey, if that's how it's gonna work, because the thing is like they never. The way they had said it is the last time that Obi Wan and, and Anakin fought, or the the but between there was no fighting between them at the point like leading up to the New Hope. Mm-hmm. Like that fight in the New Hope was the second time they ever fought. At least that's the way it was always set up. Yeah, doesn't mean they can't retcon it. I mean, they just retcon Boba Fett. So like, yeah, uh, so maybe they'll change. I don't know, but. And and also the question is like is he going to be in the suit because I will be cool I will yeah like I I'm okay like if we don't ever hear hey like what we may see is maybe if they do fight Vader will get damaged and we'll see Hayden's face like in mm-hmm. the mask which I uh, you know either they way may, it's cool they, do, they I, may do more flashbacks and actually give him more like have him more memories of, yeah. of him and them to get I which to be honest with for you it. <laughs> to, which to which to be honest with you that actually now correcting my previous statement would help the prequels. Yeah. Because then you would actually have some kind of live action con- consistency with mm-hmm. it. Cause I know that you, you'd said like, if you watch the, the clone wars and the, and rebels, like you actually see, you actually see Anakin struggle with his belief in whether or not the Jedi are actually good. Yeah. Like the clone and, wars shows it, not rebels really. Yeah. But yeah, no. And, and that would be good, especially because you would also have e, uh, Ian McGregor playing, playing across from him. And it'd be a lot easier to accept the things I, that happened in the prequels. I read somewhere. This is, I really wish I had, like, I wish I had someone that was over here. can like put proof articles up. Mm-hmm. Like, I'd, but, uh, I read somewhere that he, you and McGregor said that he would only do this if Hayden came back. So like, I don't know if like you and like, if that's true, mm-hmm. I, I read that something, maybe that was like a Reddit thing or something like that, but. I read something where they said, hey, if Hayden, like, he'll do it if Hayden came back. I'm like, mm. I don't believe that because why would you turn down free Star Wars money? They, like, <laughs> like well, right now. Well, I think now, a lot of that is, is Hayden Christensen got so much crap for how bad the prequels were. Yeah. That he, he, like, he just went away and he didn't want to do it anymore. And I think that might be his way of saying, like, hey, look. Maybe. Well, like, so he still does stuff. Mm. Like, Hayden still does stuff. He does, he does. He honestly, doesn't do big things anymore, though. No, he does whatever he actor in his situation does is they go do Christian movies. Like dude, <laughs> that's what he's been doing is he's been doing more like uh more films I don't know what they're really called because I more films for the church. More like I was, I was gonna like say like actual, when, when you like, say when you say uh actors in his position, are you talking about failed actors and they go to the only place which is poorly no, poorly uh, written actors, Christian movies actor, or <laughs> well I guess you could still say he's I get he's not really a failed actor because he's still acting. It's more or less he actors who who get a bad rep from a film mm-hmm. and kind of leave the spotlight. Yeah. Because Star Wars should have been a big thing for him, but it wasn't. Yeah. So he he disappeared. Well he didn't disappear. He went and did low budget films or now it's it's I mean he I I think I also like he he went and became like a farmer. Like he decided to yeah. take his Star Wars yeah, money. He He's dumb. like, I'm gonna go make a, a an honest, decent live li- mm-hmm. a decent life. And I tell you what, I think that was a good idea. I yeah, think that normal. if you get your big break in Hollywood, don't stay. That's what happens, yeah. man. That's they how all of these like like you want me to talk outside of like we're gonna leave this you want to hear me talk about something that I've discovered about Hollywood and like how these, so you know how like these old like talk show hosts like Ellen and stuff like that, like they're running into all these issues oh, with yeah. like things finally coming out. It's because they're in the spotlight for too long. When you are in the spotlight for too long, you're giving everyone mm-hmm. too, because the thing is some people are like, 
why have you been there for so long? That should be my spot. So they're like, get out of, get off the stage. You know, it's oh, like, yeah. nobody wants a comedian to be up forever. No one wants a person to be in, in the spotlight forever. Look at George Clooney. How often do you see him in things? Oh, Not often. Nothing anymore. He, he stuck his fame and then he's like, I'm out. I have, I have really? nothing more to give. I'll do things for fun now. Uh, Jeff Bridges is a good example. Dude's a spiritual monk, but <laughs> he really, he's a weird dude. But well, well, that doesn't fit with Hollywood's lifestyle. But that's the thing is like, he did his thing. He walked away. He's like, I did some good films. I made some money. I made a decent living. I'm good. That's the thing. You get, well, who's the guy that, go too um, far. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Oh, uh, the, the dad. Yeah. Ah. Uh, I can't think of it. Look, we said his name. But we yeah. said his name on the on the show because we because he just got punched in the face. Yeah, remember? Which was yeah, he he's randomly got punched in the face too. It wasn't even like someone was like, oh, that guy. Yeah, <laughs> it was just some guy on the side of the street just came over and clocked him. But he um he left to take care of his kids. He was a single dad for for years, and now he's starting to come back. Mm-hmm. And that was one of those things where like, when you have that Rick space, Moranis, That's Rick Moranis. Name. But yeah, it's like when you have that 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 distance. But also, I think it does come with like the culture that comes with Hollywood. It's yeah. one of those things where like anything can be anything, but also we still have standards. Like it's impossible to figure out what you're allowed to do and what you're not. That's why plastic surgery stuff exists. That's it's because like you're only there until you're attractive. Until you're attractive to the world. When you're no longer attractive, we don't want you anymore. Mm-hmm. Like that's. I mean, Hollywood is. I mean, that's why everyone's leaving, going to Texas, and. But oh, also, yeah, that's I think crazy. they're all going to Texas really. Because California sucks. Well, I mean, so I don't live in California, so I don't, I obviously don't know what it was like before, but it's not hard. You don't have to take, it doesn't take much to find out what California looks like now. I mean, oh yeah, when you have like a big mansion, like a big, nice house and right across from it in your yard or in your is syringes and in the, in the sidewalk next to our tents for all these people filled up where homeless people are living. Mm-hmm. And the thing is like, you yes, ask like, it's because these people can't. It's because these people don't do anything to society. No, maybe it's because your taxes are too high for what you're asking for. Maybe it's because of what the requirement to live there is too much. Mm-hmm. Like what well, we saw, California is closed down for COVID right now, but they're opening movie studios up because they're an essential business right across from people who own businesses of restaurants who yeah, work that could have fed them, have worked everything that they could to give those people jobs. But you just you decide no, they're not essential. Food's mm. not essential. But making sure I have a film at the theater tomorrow is very essential. No, oh, yeah. what well, are you talking about? And and that's one of those things where the the film industry will move to Texas, and it'll be interesting to see how that changes things. But it, they're they're definitely fleeing California because of California's governance. Yeah, and like, well, I, and, and it's the same thing. It's like it's the same thing with New York. You're going to see this, the same thing happen to New York because they shut down the restaurants, like you said, for COVID. Uh, their own data just came out, and it's 1.4 percent of cases came back to restaurants, and they literally just shut down all the restaurants. Yeah, it, 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 it's well, it's not just it's not just that like well, there's also, hard times, but it's it's the governance is literally so bad it's not worth staying there. Well, also these people that are putting these like stay at home orders don't stay home, so it's hard to feel kind of it's hard to feel like. It's a big deal, oh, or, yeah. or it's hard to be scared There's when no the people telling you to be scared or not, you mm-hmm. know. But no, that's the thing is like Hollywood is a mess of a place. Oh yeah, because of of well, honestly, the standard that we put up to them, like also reality. There's so much stuff like the Kardashians. I don't know why they're famous. I don't know how they have so much money, but they have a lot of money, and they're oh, yeah. famous. Be- and I, I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand Hollywood. I guess let's move on to some other stuff. We talked about Obi Wan Kenobi. Uh, there's also a film called a or a show called a Droid Story. I don't really have any. Inf- there's no real big information on this. I think it's going to be like when I was a kid, there was a cartoon called Droids, that was Star Wars Droids, and it was about uh, like a miscellaneous adventures of Obi Wan or not Obi Wan of R two D two and C three PO. Oh, I think that's what that or it's just going to tell different stories of droids. I I thought they were just going to follow the story of Roger Roger, and it was going to be like how I explained with Groot. It's not going to be, it's just going to be you following Roger Roger until he eventually meets like Obi-Wan and you're like, it's cut in half. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's, uh, but you're saying they, it's about C-3PO and R2-D2? I, th- I think. I don't have a lot of information on it. But when I wrote this, there was not, I was still trying to understand all the stuff that was going on. Uh, oh, also speaking of real quick, cause this is something you would know. Uh, I heard a, a theory the other day that 
Star Wars is actually being told thousands of years in the future by R2-D2. That's an inter- I mean, that's a possible theory. He has, like the story is a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. That theory, so he could be gone somewhere else now telling the story of what Well, that's what happened. so that's that I've heard that theory before. I heard that theory came became more popular when uh uh Duel of the Fates, the Star Wars, the ninth film that was supposed to come up. Mm-hmm. When it ends, it ends with R2 D2 playing back all the events from his point of view of all of, of this full Skywalker. Oh, saga. Cool. And that was like, all of them are like huddled around watching the events that led them to the point of victory, you know? Uh, so I great just to watch like the R2D2 projection. Yeah. Of just like really bad holograms of yeah, like people fighting. Also, I, I could have sworn, see, I could have, I even, well, I know that they did this, that, that one of the story plot threads that ended with in the revenge of the Sith was that the droids get their memories erased. Mm-hmm. But I guess what had happened is in a like alternate comic, like it turned out that information, like it didn't get erased. It just got locked away. Like R2-D2 was able to regain it all back. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> that's what, that was what they wow. said. I don't know. That's what they, but yeah, that's, I've heard that story before, but that's not like a confirmed thing. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, you, you do make a good point that the, the prequels wouldn't make sense unless there was somehow... Well, like just what it makes to, sense is to receive his data again. Well, it's also the fact that like the first time that Obi Wan and R two D two look at each other, they don't recognize each other. I'm yeah. Like, Wait, how R two R two could recognize him, but it makes sense for Ben to not. But mm. R two definitely should. Well, and and also at that time, Ben was still trying to keep up the illusion that old Ben, yeah, Kenobi. Vader, Vader wasn't <laughs> really bad known. way to do it. Let's go back to his hometown and call myself mm. Kenobi at the end, but. There's also um, a really good video that came out where uh, it shows that in the uh, A New Hope, where he's explaining that you know me and your father used to to fight back in the Clone Wars together, and uh, it just does cutaways to the prequels. Oh, the P- Obi Wan has PTSD. Yeah, I like know it, it, film- it. Yep, I know. And, what and it about. actually is it is actually a really well put together little thing. Mm-hmm. I've watched that in many times, and I'm I'm always I'm always impressed that people like sit down and they're like, you know what, I'm just going to put this out on. On YouTube, I I as go an, look at it. I as an adult have been more. I, I guess the older I've been getting, the more in in tuned with my like. I'm no longer like like I still I cry a lot more now, and I think it mm. might be just because I'm a, a big baby over 2020 or all the stress. <laughs> but uh, Star Wars, like even now after all of the stuff that I've gone through, like I still feel like. Emo- like anytime I see videos like that, like that PTSD one made me feel a lot of emotions. I was like, ah, mm-hmm. like you make that connection. Well, that's what I think it also helps. Is like the Clone Wars and, and Rebels and all these other shows are doing something that they should. And they're making something that's also for kids, but for mm-hmm. adults as well. And, and like Clone Wars and Rebels have episodes where it shows like the world after like the Empire was making it like was not it wasn't good and evil like the empire you can understand where they came from mm. uh and they kind of hinted that with the mandalorian as well but um like it wasn't just like surviving jedi that sur- that had ptsd like surviving clones had ptsd people that grew up in like mm-hmm. cuz with I, it's real life like the thing is like all these different planets they were civilizations that weren't didn't have war and then one day either droids or what people in white armor showed up and war happened on their planet. Like, yeah. And I like that a lot of the stories, a lot of comic books and a lot of movies and, and all sorts of media, star Wars media has been telling that story more. And it mm-hmm. did really good. It, I mean, it, we had, we had books and stuff that did that already, but now it's, it's, it's becoming more of like a more accessible thing. And, I don't know. I guess whatever you believe, like it's a kid's film. It shouldn't, or it's, it's, it's fiction. It shouldn't really mm-hmm. show that stuff. It depends on your, but I believe that that kind of media can show that media. If you, if you deliver that to people the right way, can teach people a lot. Like you can teach people a lot about, uh, about those, those subjects. Yeah. You know, like about about this, life in general. Like yeah. life is difficult. And the fact that like, 
in, in you are speaking to something that really does matter. It's like you're you're showing a more nuanced version of the general story. Yeah. Like, you know that this side is more good than that side, mm-hmm. but you can also understand how that side got there. And that was always, like I said, my critique of the original prequels is that, like, you never understood how, you know, Hayden Christensen's Anakin got to the point where he was Vader. Yeah. Like, it was just all of a sudden a, a flip, I, a, a switch flipped. It didn't take... And, like, these extra things that came out, like you're, like you're mentioning, or you're making it realize, like, oh, like, I can understand why it would be appealing to be a tyrant in order to protect people. Well, there's also like analysis, like there's a great analysis that says the, that w- a video that like looks at like the original prequels outside of like the Clone Wars TV show. And the, the threads, like the threads are there to show you why the Jedi fell. Why? Like it's, it Lucas had a story here. Mm-hmm. Like it's just where he, how he got to what he, how he got the, got with what he got. There's many factors, but you can tell the story he was trying to write, and it yeah. uh, it does it does make sense. But it is one of those things that you have to like, and you have to analyze, and you have to mm-hmm. absorb everything around you. And sometimes it's hard to do that. Isn't? Um, but, um, like the the what they're doing with, and this is where I think Disney kind of screwed up with Star Wars is like they tried to go back to the idea that good and evil are two things. There's just good. There's just evil. Mm-hmm. And now they're doing a fix with like Ahsoka is not a Jedi. She has a white crystal, lightsaber crystal because she's not a good, she's not a Sith or a Jedi. She's in the middle. Yeah. Like they're trying to do that. The original Duel of Fates, that was how Rey's ending was going to be. Is Rey wasn't a Jedi or a Sith. She was in the middle. Yeah. And, you know, the Clone Wars did kind of talk about that. Mm-hmm. Um, but Disney wanted to make it more good and evil. That's why, like, that <laughs> I think Matt. Matt had said it in the one of their episodes. Um, the first order are just evil to be evil. Like the, like where the empire, you understand, like you can believe the empire exists and you can see it from the, uh, the other side. Like you can see mm-hmm. from the empire's point of view, why they think what they're doing is good. But the first order, like there's no reason for them to be as evil as they are. They're just, they're just Nazis for, the sake of being Nazis, they're plot, they're villains mm. to be for the plot. Yeah. They're not like, and, and that's because you don't like the first time we ever see the first order, they just go to a random village and they just start executing people, killing people. And just, yeah. there's no, no rhyme or reason, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those well, things in, in, in to, into what you're saying. Um, somebody actually made this critique of, uh, uh, Avengers with mm-hmm. Endgame and, uh, infinity wars. Yeah. Where Infinity War, Thanos is such an interesting character because he honestly believes mm-hmm. the only way to protect people is to call the herd. Yeah, and, and because like, it happened to him. Like and, he, and, he lived through a problem and he, that was the solution he came yeah, to. Yeah, and, and he it was one of those things where he's like, listen, I don't want people to die, mm-hmm. but I understand that it has to happen. And in order for others to, to flourish, it would be better that half of them were gone. Yeah, like so, in but, his and, eyes, he's making a sacrifice for us because yes. he's making a choice that no one should make. Yeah. And he has, but he's doing it. And, and then in the second one, he's like, oh, well, I guess I'm wrong. I guess I just have to murder everyone. It's like, okay, well. That's yeah. He said like to it, fix my problem yeah. is just to erase everyone. It's like well, yeah, it, yeah. it's like okay. Well, now it's not as interesting because it's not an ideology. Like it, it, like to me, I think the the second one would have been more interesting if he was like okay. Well, then I guess I'll give the other half a chance. Well, that's what I saw. The I saw like, a video that talked about the same thing. It's like what's the difference in him? Why is there such a difference in him? And it's mm-hmm. because the Thanos you're seeing in an Endgame is actually years, many years younger than the Thanos in an Endgame. So in in Endgame. Oh, yeah. He takes his armor off and only wears that glove, or not Endgame, sorry, in uh, Infinity War, he takes his armor off and all he does is wear the glove Mm -hmm. because he's an old man who has learned and and matured and understand the weight of the decision he's making where the one that we see in Endgame is just a battle heart, is just a a new soldier who's having fun in in becoming a ruler. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, he doesn't... The immaturity. He hasn't grown enough, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's what... and, And I like... I see why they did that is because that because everything that Thanos to, to make Thanos do what he does doesn't make sense from the from Thanos and Endgame. It has to be like a a, a younger, not, not as mature and not as mm-hmm. uh, well-rounded and, and molded 
pre character. Yeah. Because I mean, that's why I like, that's why I loved Thanos. So like I became like, I love that character so much is because even in the comic books, he's not like the way he is in that film. In that film, he's a bioterrorist mm-hmm. and he, he does a lot. And like, as, as I said, infinity war was Thanos's movie. Yeah. It was not the Avengers movie. Yeah. <laughs> like, and well, that was Endgame one of the things was that, their movie. Yeah. And, and that was one of the things that I thought was cool is they put the hero's journey on its head and they actually yeah. put the villain through the hero's journey. Yeah. Which was really neat. And you know, I, I, I tell you what, man, there, it's there's no secret. There's a there was a subreddit called Thanos did nothing wrong, and those are people because those people actually was like, yeah, he he makes sense. Mm. Like that's what makes a compelling villain is a villain that's doing things, and you look and he's like, well, he's got a point. Yeah, well, <laughs> like, well and, and and it's one of those things where like, um, to kind of use a real world example, uh, it's like if you look at like the Castros, mm-hmm. it's like you can look at what they wanted the end to look like. And you can look at it and be like, you know, they built schools and they built hospitals and they were trying to take care of people, Mm -hmm. but also they were shooting anyone that disagreed with them. And that came out to mass numbers. And like, Mm -hmm. you can, you can look at it and say, okay, at that point you lost your way. And that's kind of one of the cool things with, with villains is like, you want a villain that has rationale and is like, you can understand, I get why you're there, but you can't go there. Yeah. Because a, a, a interesting villain is a villain that does things a villain that has lost their way and they've mm. it's it's clear that somewhere down the line pl- the plan went wrong and that's why they're doing what they're doing not a villain who's just evil for the sake of being evil exactly you know like anyone like i, I go to like a villain blowing up a, a church full of people or like the villains uh actually yeah I'm, i know where i'm going with this mm-hmm. i was like <laughs> i forgot my thought uh in the patriot the one the main villains are not like they play off that the main villain of the Patriot film mm. is going to be the generals for the British that, that we keep eventually seeing him. Mm-hmm. But really it turns out it's just this random villain who the random fighter in, in the war who, who is one of the uh, mounted battalion for the British. Mm-hmm. And like at one point he burns a church down to just, and it, he seems like he's doing things to be evil. And he, after a while you're still like, well, he's not that interested. He's just, killing people to be a mass murderer yeah. what he's doing but then they slowly throw these things in like the main the villain who you think is supposed to be the main villain constantly throw peppers in these things to help you realize oh this guy does this stuff because he he's had he's hardened by war mm-hmm. and like killing all those people he sees to get to an end yep and he's become numb to the idea of what he's doing yep. that's how you make a character that's just evil to be evil interesting but where most of film, most of like the worst villains in history, all are just mm-hmm. evil to be evil, and you don't really get the idea of why they've become that way. And oh, I, yeah. But I also think it comes down to it always seems to be films that are quick, like fast films that last only like an hour and a half. Yeah. But films like The Patriot, which is like two and a half hours, and you have enough time to build you know, that up. You you see all that, like you're like, oh, well, I get it. <laughs> and that was um, oddly enough, the first podcast I was on to talk about the uh, the Joker movie. And one of mm-hmm. the things I said about the Joker movie was the thing that I think made it um, weak, like a weak movie, was that they tried to justify the Joker. So instead of you, instead of it being a, oh, I see why you're doing what you're doing, but don't do that thing. Like, I don't want to, mm-hmm. I, like, like choose choose the different way. Like, you, like, That's you, right. You're you, a minority in that. Like, you were the one, you were one of the people that oh, yeah. didn't well, like in, it. In my, my big, um, and oddly enough, I don't think I've said this on the show because our that first episode got lost. Because the the audio didn't come in correctly, mm-hmm. um, the the big thing about that episode that um, or that that show that bothered me was the moment he became the Joker was mm-hmm. the train scene when he killed all three of those people. Yeah, and I I said that one thing that changes the entire storyline is if instead of them beating him and him defending himself, is them making fun of him, and because they had previously made a point about how you know they're. He had, he had said to those, about those kids that beat him up. They're just kids. They don't know any better. Yeah. If it would have been them making fun of him and he went, you know what? You're an adult. You should know better. And, and their punishment was death. Well, it would have been it would have been a moment where he chose to do the wrong thing rather than it being him defending himself and then him panicking and then killing the last guy. Because somebody had made the argument that the uh, the last guy was was murder. So therefore, that was him making the choice. But it was still in no. self-defense. I, so the thing is, like, it was all in self-defense. Uh, but I think what I think the point is like when he walks and runs into that 
bathroom and mm-hmm. he looks at the gun, like he finds out that he loves what he's doing. He loves killing. That's when he becomes the Joker. It's not the fact that he defended himself. It was like he ran because obviously as you kill someone, you run away. Yeah. Because you, you're, you're you know, worried about getting you, caught. You got all your stuff. But it was the idea that he loved what he did. That's why like as the movie goes, when he's, as it shows, his most confidence moments is when he lets go of how he what he feels is right and wrong and mm-hmm. he just does what he wants to do. And that's why he's that's why the movie goes because he's mentally ill and that's why the Joker in, in the comics is so interesting is because he doesn't do anything because it's good or bad. He does it because that's what he wants to do. Mm-hmm. Because meant because he's mentally deranged. Yeah. And he as and uh, and this is why I feel like the the film didn't do a good job. Uh, this is where I think the Joker did a bad thing is it tried to make a light of the fact that this mentally ill person is smarter than everyone else. And you just think I'm sick of being stepped on all the time. So I'm going to fight back. Oh yeah. What they should have done is what most of the stories of the Joker is, is like the Joker does what he does is because he believes that the, everyone around, like he, he is labeled insane all the time, but the truth is we're all insane. Like in the Joker's mindset, we are all the same. Mm Mm-hmm. We all have that one, like it only takes one little push as, as he says, there's like, it takes one bad day to turn you into me, as he said, in like in the killing joke. Mm-hmm. And that's what, it, and that's true. There's real life examples of so many people who are plain, blamely normal, perfectly fine, have nothing wrong with them, never showed anything wrong with them. Yeah. But they had one, but one bad day happened and it snapped and then they killed someone or they did something very horrible. Mm-hmm. There's a, story of a kid who was walking home he was walking down through the train tracks coming home this was like uh the the mid 60s mm-hmm. maybe the mid 60s late late or early 70s um he was walking home to on his birthday totally normal dude like mm-hmm. he was celebrating his birthday everything was totally fine with him his daughter or his sister was with him earlier in the night and said he Walked away totally fine. Mm. He was just walking down, and a homeless man asked him for money. And uh, and and as the guy admitted, he's like, "I just walk." I said, "No." The guy, the homeless man, called him an asshole. That's all he did. Just called him an asshole. Mm. And then he snapped and he murdered that homeless man. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> Great. And the thing is, is like, and it, the there was a, a psychologist that said, every one of us has a, everything about a human being that's the same as we all have a shadow. And depending on how the light, yes. how I think it's Carl Jung. Depending how the light is shining on us, that shadow gets bigger. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the that's like where the world we all fight that every day, like every day. Mm-hmm. We all think like sometimes we all you, maybe you're in traffic, you have anger, you have a rage, you, you, mm-hmm. you get road rage, or you stub your toe, you're like, oh god, you know, you freak out. Yeah. The part about us is like point when one day, if it all adds up, one day. That shadow overtakes us, and now we're not the we're not us anymore. Yeah, and and, and that's a good piece of psychology, and I think that what, what we're getting ends, to an hour, so we got to shorten this episode. Well, and I, I was thinking about that, but also the first, like honestly, like the first ten minutes is us trying to figure it out. Yeah, but so we we got a little yeah. bit of time. So, but the 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 one thing that um, I think think is correct is that in I think the big problem that they made about that movie was making it society was the problem. Society yeah. wasn't helping him. Society wasn't doing these things. And like, you can even see what they did with Wayne where in, because Wayne was supposed to be the one that was trying to help. I think one of the things that they should have done is the Joker should have met Wayne. Like you can still do the thing where it confronts him. Maybe I'm your son. Mm-hmm. And Wayne should say, Hey, listen, son, you're not, you're not well. Here's a place you can go to get help. Yeah. And when he goes there for like a week or two, and that could be your scene where, she, where he's talking to the, to the lady that really doesn't care. Mm-hmm. They could shut it down. Then he could blame Wayne for it. Yeah. Now we all know that it's not Wayne's fault that that place shut down because Wayne's not in power yet. He's trying to get there so that he can help everyone. So in like, that's where I argue that it's different because Wayne does have power. So he does have power. Like he's he trying, does, but to, he's trying, but he's he's not in the government, and that was the point. Well, he is though. See, that's that's the thing, and that's where that's where it got muggy in that film is like, uh, Wayne. The Wayne family builds Gotham. Like mm-hmm. they built Gotham. That's the same in every story that involves Gotham City and Joker, Batman, all of them. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing is like the Waynes are the richest people in Gotham and they actually have a pull in the government. The only difference yeah. in this is like Wayne's running for, he's running office. for office, but he is, he's, he's always had a pull in the government. Yeah. Like that's why like lately. The, well, I think that's, that's kind of my point is that like 
in this, he's running for office because clearly nobody else is doing it correctly. And that would suggest that his pool is no longer working. Well, that's not the case. So in the film, they, they drive it off the fact that like Wayne is not like he's doing. And this is where I kind of like, I think they did a thing with trying to make it show that he is corrupt. He is mm. corrupt and he's just being mayor to make more money. Yeah. They, and they I mean, did a really bad, bad I mean, job with that. That happens though. Like that mm. happens. But the thing is, I think that there was a lot of stuff that happened in the Joker that definitely made sense. Joker lives in the slums. He lives with his mm. mother. He feels like he's, he feels like he wants he feels to like be he's been cheated. He's also been abused physically as a mm. kid. And it's all fun. Like that's he why that movie, of... I had no trouble believing that movie. I thought the movie did a fantastic good job of it. Oh yeah. 100%. The, but there, I, I see your point. I see where mm. you're coming from with thing where they could have been better. Yeah. In a lot uh, of it, in a lot of it was that trying to justify him because like he's got plenty of reasons to point to the world and point mm-hmm. to society and say you're the problem. Yeah. But that was the problem is they just they they said yeah you're right instead mm-hmm. of saying no you're wrong. And that's what I think they tried to do with the Murray show is like he's like mm-hmm. he's, or what the what did Murray say? Murray says to him he said so you think something I'm like so you think. That it's you think it's funny that these two these two lost their lives and he replies back and says, yeah I do because you know they didn't care about anybody yeah no, I'm tired of those. pretending it's not yeah I'm tired of pretending that it's not okay yeah. and like that's where I think they were trying to show off is like like no it's still murder yeah. <laughs> like, well and, and that was the problem is that like in in trying to show it from Joker's perspective they didn't like in the in the best part about a good movie is that they show it objectively but from a point of view not a perspective yeah. And that was the problem is that they showed it from the idea that society was the problem. Society created the Joker and the Joker is finally just saying, you know what? Society is the problem. I'm going to wreck it. I think and then also the fact is the film is a good Joker film because at the oh, end, yeah. you don't know if really all that happened. That's oh, the thing. Like you don't really know if it all happened or not. You'll, the, you'll never look at the film the same. The Joker's superpower hmm. running away from things. What do you mean? Next time you watch it, notice how many scenes he's just running. Oh, I okay. I see. <laughs> like, and, and like, I thought about it. Like when I was done watching it, I was like, if I get on Cinemasins and they don't say, Ugh, don't, like, like here's oof. a bonus round for running away from things, I'm gonna don't, lose it. Don't bring up that god awful show, <laughs> Cinemasins. Well, I do think you are right, though. I think we're pretty much at the end of the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've been doing this for an hour. See, I think I think I'm gonna start a show where we just talk. I just talk to people. Like mm. I feel like me. I would really like to sit here and talk to you for hours about stuff like this. And like just I think random me, subjects. Yeah, we could have good. I want to. I want to bring Matt's dad on. I want to talk to him for hours just about his life. Oh yeah. He has so many stories. And you can tell too. I want to bring other. Pe- yeah. Like there's so many people. I just want to talk to. I just mm. want to like hear their stories. And I feel like because I have a memory of a goldfish, it'd be easier. I could always go back and listen. <laughs> like, what did he say about that? <laughs> it would actually be really nice to have the recordings too. I know a friend of mine that uh, we work with actually uh, made a point. Like he has a bunch of recordings with him and his grandfather. Cause mm-hmm. like he wants to be able to remember what his grandfather said about certain. That's subjects. what I, I want to film. I would love to film stories that my grandparents had. I, I I would just like to meet like you have like friends that want to talk to someone like I want to randomly talk to people. That's yeah. what I want. I think I'm going to do that. Yeah. Now the equipment's here. We'll set it up. I'm going to do that. I think I'm, I think that's so uh, t- so Ryan, Ryan. Where, where, where can our people find you? Uh, you find me at Red Steak Ryan everywhere. Uh, I've been working on that streaming thing and I've been posting a lot of miniatures and stuff. I'm coming up with new ideas and stuff that I want to do for fun. Nice. Well, you can what find me at little under, at whoa, whoa, <laughs> little underscore leaf, L I E F. Um, yeah. Listen, real quick, just so all of you listeners out there, just want to say some kind of words. We're getting to the end of the year, and it's definitely been a kind of a bad year for I think everybody. I think Zach and I can say in our personal lives right now, there's a chance our year is about to get worse oh, for yeah. the holidays. Um, but, uh, well, next next week we're gonna have a Christmas episode. We'll probably I can probably mention more of it. But uh, look, at the end of the day, when you're walking walking around, you're waking up every morning and you're trying to live your life. Just try to be positive and just remember, you rock, man. Like whoever you are, we're all awesome. We're all awesome on the inside, and and uh, you matter. 
no matter how tough this year has been, there's still there's still light at the end of the tunnel, and just you got to keep running. You got to keep going. Eventually, everything's going to get mm-hmm. back to normal. Life is going to be good. Uh, you know, try not to let life, the way life is going right now, beat you down because it's it's surely beating me down. And you got to get up and you got to keep fighting. You got to yeah. keep fighting that big fight. <laughs> Uh, well, I think one of my favorite quotes is uh, "Life's hard. You've got you've literally got nothing better to do but make it better." Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So look, whoever you know, if you're listening to this, just because you know the end of the year, and uh, we don't say I don't say a lot of good things very often in my own life or anything like that. I always try to make those self-deprecating jokes. <laughs> and since my career is going to end eventually, if we get it turns out five thousand listeners is what I said. Five thousand. Fifty thousand. Now it's a little bit more real oh. to me. Uh, 5,000 current listeners. You but, heard it blast us out? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, if you want to watch me ruin my career, let's get 5,000 concurrent listeners on this show. But um, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. And uh, we will talk to you guys tomorrow for, or, well, not tomorrow. <laughs> next, <laughs> next week. Christmas next special. week's for Christmas. Woo. Woo. Two days before Christmas. Or Actually, no. This comes on Thursday, and Christmas is on a Friday, right? Yeah. Huh. So it'll be Christmas Eve. Oh, we have a Christmas Eve episode. Hey-oh. I love it when it works out that way. Bye-bye, everybody. Have fun. Have fun.